So now 1980 comes along. I've been looking at, you know, Hapgood's theory, which was accelerated plate tectonics, a type of a pole shift, as the cause of the of the um, catastrophe. And I've also now by this time read a few uh, critiques of that idea and started having very serious doubts about it. Now, 1980 comes along, you have publication, uh, three independent teams that had all concluded that the dinosaur extinction was caused by the impact of something from space. The most famous and well-known of those is that um, uh, that, that uh, the, the Alvarez team came up with because they found the, the iridium layer in Italy at the Cretaceous tertiary boundary. And they saw that this Iridium enhancement was roughly a hundred times, I think, about more than the background amount of iridium, either in the the the, the strata above or the strata below, which led them to believe because they knew that iridium was rare in the surface of the Earth but abundant in meteorites and asteroids. So when they found this spike of iridium right at the the KT boundary where the dinosaurs went extinct, there was just this very large spike of iridium. They theorized, well, could it have been that there was an asteroid impact? And then they put it out to their colleagues. And I think there was a group in Denmark and a group in New Zealand that went back and took a closer look at the KT boundary, at this this layer that separated the the Mesozoic from the uh, Cenozoic, which was the massive shift in the in the balance of biological terrestrial nature, right? So they took a look at this layer and they discovered that everywhere they looked, you had this spike of iridium. And so within the next year, a couple of years, dozens of sites around the planet were re-examined. And in each case, this iridium spike showed up. Same spike. So it looked like the entire planet got dusted with iridium. So this is what... Is is there any other cause, potential cause of that dusting of iridium, or is it... Well, you can have iridium uh, outgassed in volcanic eruptions, but not on the Mm -hmm. scale that we're looking at. Right. And and so, again, this is the same kind of a thing where you have these various strands of evidence come together, because then what happened was, once they started taking a closer look, they they found out that not only was there iridium, but there were um, shocked quartz associated. Shocked quartz is when you have a huge impact into silicate-based rocks, the pressure wave moves through and it leaves a very distinct signature. It's only seen microscopically, but it's a very distinct signature, um, and it creates these parallel deformation features. They're called PDFs, which which show up. I could show you, and in, 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 I could pull up, and we could actually look at pictures of shocked quartz. But that's a diagnostic for, for a high vo- hypervelocity impact. Then... Um, you had meltwater uh, evidence found, uh, not meltwater, um, but uh, pooling. Like, let, let me back up a little bit. The critics who attacked this said, you cannot, you cannot accept this idea unless we have a smoking gun. And the smoking gun would be a crater, right? So the hunt began in the 80s for a crater. They looked at multiple, um, you know, at one point, the Manson Crater in Iowa was in being invoked. But once they learned more about the Manson Crater in Iowa, it was too small and it was too early to have been a KT boundary uh, candidate crater. But then they began to notice in Louisiana and Texas some deposits that looked like giant tsunami deposits. Then they began to see evidence in Cuba, like huge boulder deposits that looked like they had been washed inland from a very large tsunami wave. There was multiple lines of evidence like that 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 came together and ultimately led them to uh, the Yucatan Peninsula. And there was a candidate crater buried under roughly a half a mile of limestone sedimentary rock about 120 to 140 miles in diameter, and uh, it dated precisely to the KT boundary. So at that point, most scientists were willing to accept that there had been a big impact. There was still controversy about whether it was impact or volcanism that caused the extinction of the dinosaurs. Because Could have been both. Could have been both. I think it was both. <laughs> right. Because at the same time as that impact, you had the Deccan yeah. traps in India being um, – you know, these right. gigantic basalt floods that were 
ejecting huge amounts of sulfur and things into the atmosphere, mm-hmm. which would have contributed to acidifying the atmosphere. I think that the two were working in tandem. I think volcanism or endogenic within the earth and exogenic from without the earth. At this point, my, my thinking leads me to believe that the primary driver is outside and that we can see that there are periods of enhanced volcanism, enhanced seismicity, enhanced uh, climate change, and so on. But ultimately, the trigger is external. That's that's what I believe now. 